Governor and others, they have claimed that if only the rest of the country had tougher gun laws like we have here in New York State, these types of tragedies could have been avoided. Well, we asked Channel 2's Michael Wooten to verify what effect the SAFE Act could have had. Michael? It's impossible to know for sure if the shooter could have carried out his attack here in New York State, where our gun laws are much tougher. But we can look to the SAFE Act to see what impact it may have had on the shooting if it were the law in Florida. First, the gun. The shooter used a Smith & Wesson m and 15 semi-automatic rifle. It's a variant of the AR-15, the type of weapon used in the vast majority of mass killings. Governor Andrew Cuomo tweeted that the SAFE Act banned assault rifles, including AR-15s. That's not exactly true. Some AR-15s are legal here in New York, like this one for sale today at a store in Alden. It has a fixed 10-round magazine, so it's not technically an assault rifle. But the gun the shooter legally purchased in Florida could not have been legally bought here because it had a pistol grip and a detachable magazine, which allowed him to quickly reload more bullets. Next, age. The teenage shooter was able to buy that semi-automatic rifle, even though you must be 21 to buy a pistol in Florida. Well, here in New York, the SAFE Act wouldn't have addressed that at all. In fact, outside of New York City, you only need to be 16 to own a rifle in this state. And finally, you can look at mental health. New York SAFE Act created a database intended to keep guns out of the wrong hands. A mental health professional like a doctor, nurse, or social worker is required to report any person who is, quote, likely to engage in conduct that would result in serious harm to self or others. So that person can be added to the database. More than 77,000 people deemed mentally ill have been put into the database. According to Broward County Mayor Beam Fur, the shooter had been dealing with mental health issues and got treatment at a local clinic. If that were in New York, it's possible that would have meant his name was added to that database and he would have been denied access to buy the weapon. But here's the key. As long as individual states have different rules and regulations regarding guns, ammo, and mental health, someone can just drive to a place that has the most lax laws, buy the weapon, and then come back to commit the crime. Michael Wooten, Channel 2 News.